Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the SH Figure Arts Street Fighter V Cami figure, which is one that I've been very excited about. You know how awesome it is that we're getting all these different Street Fighter figures. This one looked like it was going to be really good, and in some ways it is really good, but in other ways it is just laughably bad, and it's very disappointing. But uh, there's a lot to talk about, so let's go ahead and get it off the stand and take a closer look. This figure stands, and you can see it's not perfectly 100% straight up and down, but that's probably a good estimate because you're not likely going to have her standing straight up, but that's pretty darn close. Anyway, she's about 5 and 3 quarter inches tall. The hat poofs up just a little bit above that, but that's probably a, a fair enough measurement, which makes her just about 14 and a half centimeters. And if you're curious how she scales with the other figure arts street fighters, here is Chun-Li, and there they are at the at the same stance, roughly, pretty close anyway. Looks like Cammy's just a tiny bit shorter, which I believe is accurate. I'm pretty sure it is. And then we have up against Ryu. Ryu, stop looking up into the sky like a doofus. There we go. So she is a lot shorter than Ryu. So that's pretty good. I think the scaling is fine. I am not going to compare it to Storm. People keep asking me that. They're not even close to the same scale, guys. Not even a little bit. So we're not going to worry about that. So... Overall, yes, I do like the figure for the most part. Like I said, it does some things really well, but then other things just terribly. I think they got their proportions pretty well. Uh, I think it looks pretty good overall in terms of accuracy to the game. But there are some serious problems, and we're going to get to those. Uh, we're going to get to one of them right now. So one thing about this figure is the paint. The shading on it for the skin tone is okay, except her skin tone is very pale. Now, I know she's supposed to be pale, but this is like a pinkish kind of pale, and it doesn't look great. It looks a little weird, but I could get past it if it wasn't the only paint really on the figure. There's no shading throughout the green. There's a little bit of a buckle paint job on there, but the rest of it is just very plain looking. It's just really not great, and you can see on the green part, they have the molded texture for the suit. There's no shading to accent that at all. It, it just looks very unfinished. Same thing for the hair. I've heard some people say it's too yellow. Well, it's not really too yellow, it's just that there's no shading on it, so it looks very cheap and plasticky. It reminds me of an old McDonald's toy. It just doesn't look good. It's very similar in effect to the recent Vegeta figure where it just has not enough paint on it. It does not look like a finished product. I will say I like the way the arm pieces are a different color red, like the armor here and here and here. It's different than the other red, so that's kind of cool. The face is very similar to Ryu and Chun-Li in that it's very cartoonish and not quite accurate. And I could live with that if it wasn't for these other issues. Okay, so here's the issue with the paint. The big issue, we've already covered one issue, this crotch piece. Now, I don't mind the way they handled the sculpt or anything like that. I think that's fine. People are complaining about her butt. I think that's fine. I mean, there's not too many other options you can do for that and have it work with the articulation. Sure, you could have made the butt all on the legs, but then when you posed it, it would look totally off. Or you could have put it all on this floating kind of piece, but then when you posed it, it would look totally off. So I think this is fine. Functionally, I'll show you briefly, you know, it kind of it kind of holds its shape. So that's fine. But, no pun intended, this piece was molded in green. It goes all the way around, molded in green, so they had to paint the skin tone on there, and it's just not the right color. In fact, it looks way worse to the naked eye than it does on camera. Uh, right now, the harsh lights are making this pink area, the skin color area, look brighter. It's not. It's very obviously not painted enough. It has some green peeking through, and it's even worse on the back side. You can, hopefully you can see on camera, two completely different shades of skin tone. Not even close. It looks really, really awful. So that's a huge problem. It just does not look good. And there's one other huge problem, one other minor problem we'll get to. One good thing, though, is this harness is a separate piece, so it's completely clean. There's no paint issues to worry about there, so that's pretty good. Okay, let's talk about accessories before we move on with the figure. First thing is we have three different faces. One neutral face, one neutral face looking off to the side, and then one yelling face. And they all look, I mean, they're all done well enough, but they still have that cartoonish look. We have a few different hands. You have the two fist hands that come on in the package, two kind of open palm hands, and then two style pose hands. We do have an effect part, which looks fantastic. I really do like how that was done. And then we also have her backdrop pieces, which are printed nicely and look good like the other figures' backdrop pieces. 
And that's about it. Pretty light on the accessories, to be honest. Yes, the effect part is kind of big, but that's it. Not too much going on for the accessories. So let's go ahead and run through the articulation, and we'll see how this figure pans out. I actually haven't checked her head yet. It's a ball hinge. So you're going to have to kind of play around with play around with it to get it to work properly, but you shouldn't have too much trouble with the range other than eventually having to get it to wiggle into place. Like you see how I can't really lean it to the side at all. You're going to have to rotate that ball hinge around. Double ball pegs are just so much more effective. This will work. I mean, it's got enough clearance to work. It's just going to be a pain in the butt, so that's okay. The hair is on individual little ball hinges, but you can see there's really no room for the hair to move. You just get a little bit of range on there, and these are not bendy or anything, so you're going to need to rotate them if you want them to move in certain ways. I, I don't know. I feel like they could have just made them bendy, or made them have more range, or given us interchangeable parts. It's not bad. It's not a problem. It's just not as good as it could have been. It just feels a little bit like an afterthought. The shoulders have a ball peg going into the torso, and then your ball hinge is inside this shoulder cup, so you have your standard range. You can get the arm out to horizontal, so that's pretty good, and then of course you can move that ball peg around as well, so you have really good range. You can bring the arm across the chest just a little bit, not really across so much as straight out, and that's okay given the fact that she has boobages and a harness. I think that's okay. You get pretty good range going forward, so that's fine. You know, you have, it's, it's fine. It's got good range. You have your bicep swivel here and the shoulder cup will rotate, so that's pretty good. You have a double jointed elbow, which is good functionally speaking. You get decent range, but it makes her elbow and forearm right here very, very, very big. It's not necessarily a problem. It just doesn't look quite right because... In, in terms of anatomy, you want your bicep to be narrower when you're looking at it from the front so the forearm's wider, because the bicep and tricep have muscles pretty much going forward and back. They're stacked this way, whereas the forearm, they're stacked this way. So this way, the bicep should be thicker, the upper arm should be thicker this way, and the forearm should be narrower, whereas it's still really, really big. The forearm's bigger than the bicep all the way around, so it's not great. You do get a rotation here in the arm guard. It's just a little stiff, but you can rotate that around, so that's pretty cool. I like that. You have your standard ball hinge for the wrist, which actually functions very nicely because it's hidden well by the armor, so that's good. For the torso, we have at least a single, maybe a double ball peg. It functions wonderfully. I love this. It's, that's exactly how you want your diaphragm joint to work. She has perfect range pretty much in every direction. And then we have this secondary ab crunch, which is almost useless. It has just the tiniest bit of range, and they ruined the sculpt for it, so I don't really get that. I mean, it's hidden well enough, but it doesn't do anything, so they didn't need to add that at all. They already had this wonderful diaphragm joint, maybe add a second one of those, or just don't bother. But having this hinge in here, this ab crunch, this reverse ab crunch, like the DC Direct figures did, or DC Collectible figures did for a minute, it's not a good design. They didn't need to do that. It breaks up the sculpt and it caused this weird crotch piece to be the way it is. This is not a floating crotch piece. It's just a slightly softer plastic, which is just not a good design. For the hips, it's like a Figma. We don't have the drop-down hinge. Luckily, she still gets good range. You can see her splits are just fine, so she can definitely do the kicks she needs to do. We can bring the legs forward, but they come off at an angle, and so there's no thigh swivel really, so you can't really do much with it. Her legs only come forward you can see it rotates the leg almost to a 45 degree angle. So that's a bit of a bummer. They do go back pretty well. So you're going to be able to do most of her iconic kicking moves, and that's fine. And that's why I said I don't mind the design for the butt so much as having to paint it to put it on top of green, which is just not a good idea. Why would you mold it in green and paint skin color? That's such a bad idea. Such a bad idea. Speaking of bad ideas, well wait, before we get to that, they did a good job painting this strap. Give him some credit there. That's painted well. Now, on to the, one of the worst things about this figure. This and this are tied for incredibly stupid ideas. The knee joint. Looks fine when the leg is straight. So that's a good thing. And you know what? Before I get into this super bad thing, I will give him some props on the sculpt of the anatomy for the leg. It does have a very organic look to it, though it's a little weird how this particular muscle is sculpted. But anyway... It's, it's a really organic look. It's not too cartoony. It's not too blocky. It has a very realistic look to it, so I like that a whole bunch. But we do have this problem with the knee. It's just like, almost just like, the old Play Arts Kai Kami, which had that terrible knee joint. And this is egregious. This is absolutely terrible, horrible, 100% bad knee joint. Maybe 99, because it does function. You can see it has good range. But what the hell is that? Where's her kneecap? Why is there a giant gap? 
Oh, that's right, there is no kneecap, and the gap is because we have a secondary hinge up here. In the top of the knee, we have another hinge, kind of like the 4-inch Nell Mega Man figures, although he's a robot and has perfectly good reason for it. She has a secondary hinge up there, which actually drops the leg down, away from that thigh piece. And it accomplishes essentially nothing. Look at the, look at the range difference because of that. That's it. They could have just done a regular double-jointed knee, and it would have had perfectly good range. How many times have they given us normal double-jointed knees? For a normal, it's not like it's baggy pants or anything. Why did they give us this? That is, that's absolutely terrible. And to make it even worse, from the knee down, the leg is totally crooked. See, okay, so the leg is pretty much straight right now. You see, the hinge is moving forward and back in a straight line. Look at which way her shin is facing totally off to the side it's like 20 degrees off look at her foot and you can't rotate it you can't rotate the boot it's totally crooked why why does she have her feet pointing out to the side she's not knock kneed but her feet point out to the side you can't pose her in a normal pose because her feet are pointing out to the side what is this luckily the ankles actually function pretty well i'll give them that the ankle hinges back pretty far hinges forward pretty far. We have one of these kind of ankle rockers where it actually swivels around the foot, which works nicely when she's wearing boots, so that's good. I mean, for a booted figure, obviously you can't change your boots, but for a booted figure, that's a good design. I like that. Good range, perfectly good ankle rocker. And then we have a decent toe hinge, so that's fine. But this terrible, absolutely garbage knee joint mixed with a totally crooked lower leg, it looks just like the uh, BVS Mattel Batman. The feet are pointing out to the side. Then we have this poorly painted hip piece, and then no shading anywhere except for the skin tone. What is Bandai doing? Why are they giving us these figures that are just subpar? They don't look good. I mean, there's a lot to like about this figure, don't get me wrong, but the things they're doing that are bad are just unacceptable for a company like Bandai with a line like Figure Arts. It's just not right. Same thing with Vegeta. Here's hoping uh, Nappa is better. He looks like he is, but who knows. And then we'll see about, uh, what is the guy's name? Is it Saeed? No, that's the guy from Lost. Rashid. His name is Rashid, right? I haven't played Street Fighter V. Anyway, he's coming out too, so we'll see if he's any better. But this is just half bad. It's half good and half bad. I want to like this line, but they're not giving me much reason to like it. I don't understand if they're just trying to cut costs or what, but it's very, very disappointing. So... I can't make the decision for you guys. Like I said, it's half good, half bad. Now you've got the information to make the decision for yourself. So let me know what you guys think. What do you guys think about these problems? What do you think? We'll talk about it in the comment section below. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. I have new videos up every single day. We talk about action figures, movies, TV shows, video games, all kinds of fun stuff. Make sure you check out my Twitch. We stream four times a week. I'm making my own action figure line. It should be fun. Make sure you stop by uh, twitch.tv slash Anthony's Customs. Pretty easy to find me. And give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and in the meantime, keep collecting.